We bought a cargo. Yes, you saw the thumbnail and the video title correctly. This is the Daihatsu Hijet Cargo. It has two sliding doors. I can walk right through it and go around to the back because this thing absolutely maximizes the dimensions of a K car. This is the equivalent of a Chevy Express. I'm not even joking. This is a massive vehicle in the world of K cars. We all think K cars as these tiny little things. <laughs> I'm not very tall, but I can stand up here, hunched over, with my legs fully extended. I'm like 5'7". This is a big K car, everybody. It has very little structural rigidity. They have to put these bars because they actually eliminated the headliner and the headspace to have it taller. The thing about the Daihatsu Hijet cargo is that it started based off of a truck platform, the Hijet, which is a K truck, the Daihatsu Hijet. They kind of, hey guys, I'm in the reflection. They did something where they made it into a van with the same kind of body and everything. Now, as we mentioned at the Le Pond episode, K cars have this problem with the top half and the bottom half, and they move them left and right, respectively. So what they did on this one is they've scooched everything to the absolute front. Your feet are right on top of the actual drive wheels. This is all-wheel drive, but it is front wheel as well. To give you a big cabin, a big rear cabin for the rear seats, and a huge trunk. I can put, without folding the seats down, I can put like 10 tires. 10 wheels and tires. If I fold the seats down, I get even more room. This is a crap ton of room. But you know what? I can probably twist this with my hands. Like, it's a very light vehicle. Because although K-trucks and K-cars are bound by the dimensional restrictions, except for height, I think, and I mentioned that in the Le Pond episode, these cars are pretty high. This one has that camper van style that kind of pulls back. Kind of looks like a Terrios kid. You can Google that. And uh, I don't think they're necessarily limited by height because I've seen some camper K cars and some food trucks that are pretty damn tall. Now the downside about this is that it has an engine cowl. My dad's got a van that has that and you actually don't get a whole lot of workable room in the hood. If you see down here, you have to remove a bunch of crap here to get to the engine and stuff because the hood doesn't give you access to the engine. That's the firewall. It's the length of my it's the length of my finger. So you get a couple caps for refilling your coolant, wiper reservoir, brake information. Look at that, look, the master cylinder comes right out to the absolute, if you get dinged by some guy backing up, you're gonna break your brake booster. And you got your wiper motor with harness directly pressed up against the hood and some more reservoirs. That's it. You can't get to any of the actual engine, which is, good for us because we got a really, really mechanically good car, which means everything we need to do is just side markers, tires, because those tires are absolutely nutted. They're just smooth. They're like race compounds and just lights. So we don't have to actually do anything that requires us access to the engine, heads, gaskets, nothing. So that that's good. Honestly, if we did have to do that and say I was like, uh, my buddy we get the cars from was like, yeah, man, you gotta do some engine work. I wouldn't touch it because I just don't wanna be bothered by digging around, removing side panels, just to get the things that are just so inherently easy to get to on other cars. Let's talk about the car, getting in. You have a holy crap handle right here. You can hold on for dear life. You get lots of leg room. I'm not very tall, so for me, this is lots of leg room. You could sit in the middle, although it's illegal because there's no seatbelt here and K-cars can only carry four people. Two in the front, two in the back, or just two if you have a sports car. That's it. Now, this one's manual. And watch this. I absolutely love those sliding doors. <laughs> I love it. So getting in the car here, Ah, what do we got? We have a speedometer only. Unfortunately, we don't have a tack. That kind of sucks. But look at these. Bruh. We have some hidden cup holders there. You get power. You get power. Hold on. Hold on. Nope, that was it. Yeah, power that and you get a locking diff button. I don't know what that is because they don't make a whole lot of like models of this. There's no performance model of the high jet cargo. Your rear wiper, you get signals, wipers, horn. <laughs> you get rear defrost hazards, and I don't know. AC's up there, I don't know what that is. And you can't aim your headlights? No, you cannot, that's okay. Unfortunately, 
<laughs> Back in 03, we were still using cassettes. So we only have a cassette player. We have an ashtray because I love to smoke. No, I don't. And we have some other cubbies right here, main cubby there. And I think, you know what? This is kind of bothers me a little bit. I like having a side thing here. So if I want to put something like my phone or whatever, I can. But this one actually goes through and then drops down into there. I'm not a fan of that kind of door card layout, but all in all, it's okay. You get this little convenient thing here. I mean, it's not big enough for a clipboard, but it is nice to just throw your crap there. I don't know. The dash materials are pretty bad. And I say bad because it's not luxurious. Everything is just purpose built. That's for purpose. That's for purpose. That's for function. These are plastic. I feel like if I push them hard enough, they're going to break. It feels like a Tupperware. Seats are all right. Decent amount of foam, decent pile. Side bolstering, eh, a little bit mushy, but uh, it is manual. And this is the stock shift knob, which looks pretty boss, actually. It is manual. Now, this is something I absolutely, I, I don't want to use the word hate, but I hate this. Why? Because it takes away all of what we build up as human beings for second nature. Watch this. Let me close this up and get some light. What the heck? Who thought of that? On every single car, your clutch pedal to the left has a place for you to put your foot. Not every single car, but most vehicles. But look, when I got in, I quote unquote clutched in, pressed the brake and it went brrr. It's like, oh my God, what the heck? Cause you have to relearn where to put your feet because the gas pedal should be here and the brake pedal should be here and this should be your clutch. But they've shifted over everything damn near eight inches. So now your clutch is here, and as you're driving, there's nowhere to put your foot. So after you're done clutching in and clutching out, you gotta rearrange your foot to put it somewhere, because you can't, and I got big shoes, look at this, I got size 11s, so I don't know where I'm gonna put it. And you're, this is the wheel arch, so you can't put the gas pedal there. So that was a huge gripe for me, because it really did take away everything that we learned about vehicles, be it manual, be it automatic, to have everything shifted over so drastically. It'd be like the wheel being in the center of the vehicle. It, and it's not even a little bit, it, it got moved over. So that's a little bit of a downside. I'm not happy about that. Otherwise, you know what? This car has a lot of room. It's got a lot of character. I think it's a nice one. And you know what? It's a little bit of an unknown. Everyone knows the Suzuki Carry. Everyone knows the Daihatsu Hijet when it comes to K trucks, but not a lot of people know about the cargo variant. And the cargo variant is used for carrying crap around, having it enclosed. And you know what my dad always says, there's nothing a truck can do that a van can't do. And I was like, no, you can, but you can, ah, you can put a tree. And he's like, okay, other than a tree, my van, and he's got an Express, can do everything that a truck can do, but enclosed with a roof heated in the cabin. And I was like, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> he's got a Chevy Express, and you can put a couch in the back, cabinets, everything you can throw inside a truck, except your only limitation is height. But unless you're gonna move a tree every once in a while, yeah, I, I say I would agree with him. My dad's right on the money. Vans are better than trucks. You're gonna disagree with me all day, but I, I think vans are better than trucks. Who doesn't want an enclosed, comfortable cabin with all your stuff in here, free from the rain, free from the elements, all nice and safe, versus having an open bed or a box or whatever you wanna call it. I like this car, I think it's really cool. Seats obviously fold down to next week and becomes a ton of room back here. Stay tuned for the review. Stay tuned for a lot of stuff we're going to be doing on this car. This is very exciting stuff. I love it. I love sharing this with you guys. Stay tuned to Toge Trial and for Peter for Toge Trial. Till the next one.